All right, guys, here we are with the Math 8 Fall Semester Review. Everything that you see in this review is likely to be on your semester exam, so make sure that you're studying, taking notes, uh, understanding how to get the correct answers, asking questions if you need to, um, and recording all of your answers. So here we go. Uh, rational versus irrational numbers. So what are rational numbers? Rational numbers include counting numbers, whole numbers, integers, and fractions that convert to decimals that terminate or repeat. All rational numbers can be written as a ratio of A over B, where B does not equal zero. And then you need to give five examples of rational numbers and five examples of irrational numbers, so now would be a good time to pause and make sure that your examples were correct. When writing equations, you've got to read through for the key words. 7 times a number is equal to 5 times the same number plus 50. So here is what that would look like. Um, and then if you wanted to go ahead and solve it, remember you want to move variables to one side and numbers to the other. So this would be our variable side. This would be our number side. So I would move 5x and subtract, giving me 2x equals 50. And then I would divide by 2, giving me x equals 25 for the first problem. On the second problem, uh, the equation would be 3 times a number increased by 3. So that means 3 times a number plus 3 is equal to 30. So that's what your equation would look like. Again, figure out which side you want what. Variables here, numbers here, minus 3 on both sides giving you 3x equals 27, and then you would divide by 3 to give you x equals 9. On the next one, writing equations. Uh, so we're trying to write the y equals mx plus b equation for these points. When you've got points, you can find the slope by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've taken two points and subtracted, I took these two points right here and just subtracted y minus y and x minus x and got the slope was negative one half. So then we take it down here into our equation, y equals, and our slope is negative one half, x. And then we've got to figure out the y-intercept and these points do not continue to the y-intercept. So we would have to continue them on so that we got to uh, wherever x was equal to 0, which means counting down on the x, we got negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, so the next one would be 0. And then counting down on the y's, we have 3, 2, 1, 0, so the next one would be negative 1. So our y-intercept would be negative 1. On the next example, again, I took the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to figure out the slope took these two points right here, uh, just the first two that were in the set, and subtracted them to find out that the slope is equal to 4 over 2, which then simplifies to 2. So again, we take that down into our equation, y equals slope, which was 2, x, and again, we don't know the y-intercept, so we'd have to figure it out. So the y-intercept in this one, continuing until x becomes 0, and again, they're counting down by 2, so negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, so the next one would be 0. And then counting down over here, negative 21, negative 17, negative 13, negative 9, so they're counting down by 4 each time, so the next one would be negative 5, so that would be our, our y-intercept would be minus 5. On the next question, it's a word problem looking again for the key words, and our equation would be right there. Um, and so you'd want to figure out the unit rate. How much would he charge for just one hour? And then you can easily figure out how much he would charge for two hours. Uh, and so you would have to divide that, and you'd get $25.15 for one hour, which gives you $50.30 for two hours. On the car wash question, that would be your equation. Um, and it doesn't ask you to solve it, it just wants you to write an equation. So x is the cars, and y is how much they would earn in total. Next one is an inequality question, 
you set it up just like an equation. So Cody saves $5 per week. So that's 5x. Plus, he had $50 that he got for his birthday. And then Allison saves $7 per week. And it says, write an inequality to represent the number of weeks until Allison has saved at least the same amount as Cody. So um, to save at least the same amount as Cody, she could have either less than or equal to him. Uh, describing the graph on the right. So we're looking at the line that's given to us. We see that we have miles and we have hours. And if you look on the y-axis, that's the miles. Um, and there's a point here. There's another point coming up right here. And then there's another point right there. So looking at those points, it looks like it's 10, 20, 30 miles for every two hours. So that's how you could describe the graph. And the question is, how far would the person travel in eight hours? Well, if they were traveling, traveling 15 miles per hour, that means eight hours would be uh, eight times 15, which would be 120 miles. On this next one, it wants to know, how do you find slope? And we have practiced that. But to find slope, all you're doing is simply counting the rise over the run. Uh, and so when we look at the graph, it says, what is the slope of CA? So the rise for C is um, negative 6 because it's going down 6 on the y-axis. And then um, the run is 4. And if you simplified that, that would be negative 3 over 2. And then it says, what is the slope of xz? So looking at that, that's going down 3 and over 2. And then so it says, what is the slope of cz? So if you were to count all of that, you would simplify and still get to the same slope of negative 3, 2. So what do you notice about each slope? You should have noticed that they are all the same. What is the value of x in the model below? So here's what your equation should be. There are four x's and five negatives on one side of the equation, and then on the other side there are three x's and one negative. So to solve that, again, you want to decide which side do you want the variables and which side do you want the numbers, and then you need to start moving things around. So I'm going to move my numbers first. Okay, moving my numbers first. So I would start with doing plus 5 on both sides giving me 4x equals 3x minus 4 and then I move my variable so minus 3x minus 3x gives me 1x equals negative 4. On this next one we're looking at this in multiple different ways. Um, I'm gonna let you, I'll check your graph, uh, give the equation of the line so again, we have to figure out the change in y, this is all still slope, change in y over change in x. So the change in y, each time it's going up by 75 cents, and the change in x, each time it's going up by 1. So it's going to be a positive slope. And then if we use our equation, y equals mx plus b, the slope is 0.75. And we don't know the y-intercept, so again, we'd have to continue the table. If we took this down one more, that would give us x equals 0. And if we took this down one more, each time it's going by 75 would be 0, 0. So it would just be y equals 0.75x. And then if we gave a scenario that represents the information, we could maybe say um, 75 cents per donut or something like that. When we are graphing, we have our equation y equals mx plus b. Again, the y-intercept is that second number, so that's our starting point. So I start at negative 4 on the y-axis, and then my slope is going up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. And you can continue to plot points until you run out of graph. And then um, the other one, 
starts at positive 4, and then the slope is going down 3 over 2. So down 3 over 2. Down 3 over 2. And so we see that they overlap right here at this point. And so that's the solution to both of, us, both of the lines, which means the solution would be 4 on the x and negative 2 on the y. When we're ordering our numbers from least to greatest, another way of saying least to greatest is ascending. And when we're ordering from greatest to least, another way of saying that is descending. And you would want to change all of your numbers into decimals so that you could compare them. And the final order for this first one would be negative 2 and 1 third, followed by negative 1.4, followed by 4 fifths, 21%, and... 75 hundredths. And then on the second example, um, it looks like they are already in the correct order from greatest to least. On our next example, you want to set up a ratio to show, show corresponding parts. So you're comparing the short side of this trapezoid to the long side, even though the picture doesn't really look like short long, but you get the idea. So the short side on the first one is 5 units, and the long side is 4 units. And then on the second one, we don't know the short side, but we do know the long side. So using that information, we can see that this would have been multiplied by 2 to get to 8, which means we'd have to multiply by 2 to get 10 as the missing measurement for EF. Proportional versus non-proportional. Um, so on a proportional line or equation on a graph we know it's proportional if it goes to the origin and it's non-proportional if it does not go through the origin in the ordered pairs we know it's proportional if they are equivalent ratios like 2 to 4 um, can be proportional to 4 to 8 and we know that it's not proportional if the ratios are not equivalent like 2 4 and 4 6 and then for an equation we know it's proportional if it's one step, like y equals 3x, and we know that it's non-proportional if it's two step, like y equals 3x plus 5. Uh, and then the second one, Devin wants to buy a new video game console. He has saved $50 and earns $20 per lawn that he mows. Write an equation that can be used to determine the number of lawns, uh, and I think this is supposed to say Devin, the number of lawns Devin needs to mow in order to buy the video game console, which costs V dollars. Um, and so he has saved $50, and so plus he earns $20 per lawn that he mows, and they're calling that M. If he did that, how much would it, it would, um, to save V dollars? How long would it take, or how many lawns would it take to save that much money? And again, they don't want you to solve it. They just want you to write the equation. And then it says, is the equation proportional? Why or why not? And this would be no, because it is two-step. On the next one, we're working on scientific notation. This was all the way from the beginning of the year. And all you had to do was count the decimal movement. And so this went one, two, three places. So this would have been three times ten to the negative 3. Next one would have been 5 times 10 to the negative 2. Next one is 3.77 times 10 to the negative 3, because again it moved 3 places to the left. And then the last one would be 9.6 times 10 to the 10th, because the decimal had to move 10 places to the right. Uh, and so the number used as a power of 10 would be negative 3, negative 2, negative 3, and 10. If these were on a bubble sheet, uh, these would be in the ones place. So if you had the decimal right here, um, it would be, you know, don't forget to bubble the negative sign, and then it would be like 3 right here to the left of the decimal. Parallel lines and transversals. So the vertical angles are the ones that are across from each other, like 1 and 3, and 5 and 7. So 1 and 3, 5 and 7. 
You could also have two and four. Those are vertical angles. And six and eight are also vertical angles. Uh, for the alternate interior angles, those are the ones that are on the inside, on the alternate sides of the transversal. So four and six. And those are always going to be congruent. Four and six would always be congruent because they're alternate interiors. And then corresponding ones are the ones like two and six because, again, those are um, congruent, two and six. Let's see, we would also have three and seven, one and five, and four and eight. And then the alternate exterior, this one's supposed to say exterior, the alternate exterior angles would be one and seven, and then two and eight, because those are on alternate sides of the transversal and they're on the outside. Square roots and number lines. Um, so you need the calculator for this one. The square root of 17 is approximately 4.123. Square root of B is approximately 3.87. Square root of C is approximately 3.74. And then the square root of choice D, square root of negative 13, is approximately 3.6. And so when you plot them on the number line, it's kind of up to you how you broke up that number line, but um, you could see the order that they would go. On the next one, uh, we were talking about translation or transformations and the ones that preserve congruence, meaning they don't change the size of the shape, uh, is rotation, because all you're doing is changing the orientation and reflection and translation. Those all preserve congruence, where dilation is the only one that preserves orientation, the way that it's facing, uh, or the way where it's located. Do rotations preserve orientation or congruence? We just said that they preserve congruence because they do not change the shape. Uh, and you could draw an example of that with or without a coordinate grid. Next one, dilations. So we've got a rectangle here, and the dimensions of our original rectangle are two by three. The perimeter would be two plus two plus three plus three, which equals 10. And then the area would be length times width, which equals six. Now, if we dilated it with a scale factor of two, that means our dimensions would double. So it'd be four by six, which means the perimeter would be four plus four, plus six, plus six, which would equal 20. And then the area would be uh, four times six, length times width, which would be 24. So the perimeter changed because it doubled. Perimeter doubled. And then the area changed because it quadrupled. It got multiplied by four. On this next dilation, here are the points that we see from both shapes. And so if you look closely at those points, you would notice that everything was multiplied by 2. So the scale factor is 2. And then our final question, um, looking at our shape, we've got our reflection. And it's being reflected on the y-axis. When you reflect on the y, the y stays the same. And the x becomes the opposite. So the x on uh, t would be 8, because that's the opposite of negative 8, and the y would stay the same. On u, it would be 3, because that's the opposite of negative 3, and the y would stay the same. And then on v, it would be 4, because 4 is the opposite of negative 4, and the y would stay the same. So the rule is that x stays the same, and y, or sorry, x becomes opposite, and y stays the same down here. All right, thanks for watching. Go back, pause, rework, ask questions, and get ready for your semester exam.